Jim Zorn to Steve Largent, the pulse of pro football's most exciting young offense. Yeah. Jim and I talk about once a week. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we probably see each other maybe a, a dozen times a year. But we try to even vacation together if we can. If there's a ball, if there's a ball around, we'll talk, we'll flip it around, you know. I, you know. <laughs> Again, see that? I mean, that's just sort of what he does. It makes me look good. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, start us off with your greatest memory. <laughs> I was going to say just the opposite. You should start off by talking about training camp over in Cheney. Out where the golden grain basks in the summer sun. It was so hot. One of the days it was like 104, 105 degrees. But in training camp, we had no water. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you can because yeah. you did it. Yeah. And to have no water at practice at all. Yeah, and there wasn't any studies or anything like that no. to show that you got to have water at that time. I remember that's when we had those little yellow salt, salt oh, pills. Yeah, you, salt had, pills. you had to really learn how to, how to hydrate. Yeah. So you drink a bunch, you take a bunch of salt pills, yeah. and, then, uh, and then we would pay the uh, ball boys to, to smuggle in ice in towels. <laughs> you'd act like you were wiping your face with a towel, and you'd be just getting ice chips, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. It crazy. was. It was wild. <laughs> August 1976, a picturesque landscape nestled against Lake Washington in suburban Seattle. I mean, I can't tell you for sure, but I think this was the dock area. Yeah. And you know, there were two boats here. There was the ferry. Well, this was like a ferry terminal originally, right? No, this was a World War II shipyard. Ships would come in, they'd refurbish them, and they'd go out. There's a plaque over here. Oh, there is. Yeah. It just so happens to have both of our pictures on there, Jim. Oh, yeah. So there's the ferry terminal. See, this was the other boat that I was talking about that was there. I remember going on this. I kind of snuck on the dock oh, really? and went on this boat. Yeah. And this is where all the docks were, where they brought in all the Navy vessels. Yeah. They were brought in here during it's the an old shipyard. Day. Our field was probably just right up here. And then the kind of, I think, I think right over here was the uh, facility. I remember the facility that was built, it had the, the uh, weight room on the left and then the training room right behind that. The field was right on the corner of one of the shorelines. Yeah. It was kind of like the end of the field, some shrubs, and then the water. And we'd throw balls in and they'd go out through the bushes. I don't know, I don't know how many would land in the water. Yeah, it's pretty fun to see what it looks like now. Pro football's newest team has returned from training camp and now prepares for opening day. The Seattle Seahawks, an expansion team in the NFL. I was at training camp in Houston, they got cut and then picked up by the Seahawks. But the thing I remember about the first time I walk on the field to practice with the Seahawks, I was late because I had to go get a physical before I could come to the We practice. were already here. We were at this facility right here. Coming out of the locker room, you know, you come, you can come down those stairs and come out, here. there's the field, the field's beautiful. And I come out and I've got my helmet on. I've got my name in, in, in they put my tape, name on tape. And, yeah. and I look and everybody had their name <laughs> yeah. on tape. And I'm thinking, wait, the veterans aren't supposed to have their name on tape, but the veterans had names on tape with tape on it and, and the rookies too. You know why we had that? Because uh, when we had come back from training camp, there had been so many guys Changes, cut. yeah. I remember in the, like the first practice, I think it was, and Jerry puts me in. You call the play, and, and you're looking at me, and you're not sure I know the play. I stepped out of the huddle and, and, and said, Jer Jerry, it's And Jerry goes, six. just call the play. That's exactly what he said. And, and what I find out at that point is that Jerry's put our entire passing game from the University of Tulsa that I played in for three years for the Seahawks. Yeah. So all the plays were exactly the same nomenclature. So I just call the play. walk in the huddle, know where to line up, know what right. the play is, how to that make an adjustment. Been. That no, must that have been a, so easy for you. Yeah, it was a, yeah. It was a real coup for me, yeah. a guy that's just gotten cut. I do remember you coming down the steps, and then you started to come in to, towards the huddle. We were already in team, and, and Jerry said, you got to take a lap at least, and that was your warm-up <laughs> for that 
for that practice. Yeah. <laughs> she sort of jogged a lap, and here we go. Well, he looks like he jogs okay. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the first two passes, I think, that you threw to me at that very first practice that I had, you know, bouncing off my hands and well, I, I didn't couldn't want to catch say the ball. What a perfect throw I threw to you on that very first yeah. pass. We snapped the ball and as I'm dropping back, they run a uh, coverage where you had to make an adjustment uh -huh. and you ran a burst corner and I threw it and you did drop it. I did drop it. That was yeah. the very first uh, pass. And I looked over at Jerry and he goes, just run plays, you know, I mean, he was, <laughs> again, he was just going, forget it. And I think he talked to you too. He did. After I dropped a couple of passes that first practice, he pulled me aside and said, look, just do what I've seen you do for the last three years and you'll be fine. And that just kind of like, oh, okay, I yeah. got it. I probably couldn't count five passes that you ever dropped. In a that, game? Just in a game, maybe even in practice. But above all else, Steve Largent owns the finest pair of hands in football. No discussion of Seattle's skilled people is complete without a look at the man who makes it all happen, Jim Zorn. Things were going so fast in my head that very first practice, I don't think I even knew Jim was left-handed until the, the next week. I'd never played with a left-handed quarterback. And so I'm thinking, you know, does the ball, is the ball delivered differently from a left-hander than a right-hander? And it is a little bit, but not very much. I really wasn't thinking about Jim at first practice for sure. I was thinking about doing what I was supposed to do and knowing, you know, do I, are the, the shoes I have, are they both, is one a left and one a right? And, <laughs> but um, Jim and I formed a pretty fast friendship. Zorn's dropping back to pass, four man pattern out. He looks, he throws down the right side for large and he's in the clear, he makes the grab, touchdown Seahawks. I would say that he has real quick moves and I think his, best asset is he understands the game and that helps me out a lot because he makes adjustments being as smart as he is on the field and don't take that to your head son right jimmy you forgot to tell him about my hands and he's got great hands <laughs> and people don't think he's fast but he's fast the nfl is loaded with a whole lot of dynamite passing combinations but i tell you if i were a defensive back this is one combination i wouldn't want to mess with we roomed together every single year uh -huh. I was there, uh, except for that first that first uh, season. My first rent roommate was Rabel, then he That's kicked right. me out. Rabel was single at the time, and he had a different lifestyle than I did. <coughs> and so he... Uh, and he's going to really enjoy you making those <laughs> comments. <laughs> well, he did. We weren't on the same page. <laughs> but I think we roomed together the second training camp. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. So this is something that I discovered about you uh, along the way that I'm very careful about now. After um, we had team meetings, we would sometimes uh, order a pizza. And I'll never forget, uh, we got this large pizza to split between us and it got delivered to our dorm room. And we're eating and you know, you're just talking and eating and talking. We're talking about training camp or whatever. And all of a sudden you go, hey, wait a minute. That that's my that those are my pieces, and I was going, what? What are you talking about? I could you? No, no, no. Those are mine. The whole time we were eating pizza, you were counting the pieces that you had versus the pieces that I had. I wouldn't count. It's like I had a little. You had the line I had drawn. A, yeah, I had, I had a line yeah, drawn. Yeah, he goes, no, 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 no. Those are mine, my pieces. Yours. That's right. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. So the rest of my life now, I've been just haunted by making sure I don't go beyond the line. You know? So this was Steve's little game. When you're in a, a hotel room it, with two, two beds in it, he'd be over there and nobody wanted to move. And this was uh, before remotes, really. And so Steve, he didn't want to move. And so he'd say, uh, okay, one or two, and he'd put one or two behind his back, and I'd say one, and he'd say it's two, and so I'd get up, and I don't know if you ever cheated, but no, the cheat. rule was you weren't allowed to cheat in this game, but I got up a lot of times to change the <laughs> channel, as I remember, and so sometimes I'd go one or two, and then he'd, he'd say two, so I'd have to still get up and turn, <laughs> turn the TV, but uh, the other 
The other uh, deal we had was we, you'd buy four candy bars and then you'd have to lay them out. If you bought them, you had to lay them out and then the other person got to choose the two that he wanted. And I think Steve was very strategic in how he bought them because I was too. So I knew which ones I wanted. Steve always likes like a Snickers bar and stuff like that, but he also liked Twix. But I didn't um, like Coke, the, the Almond Joy. Yeah, and I yeah. liked Almond Joys. Yeah. And I liked uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Oh yeah, so you had to be very strategic. Strategic, yeah. In yeah. What you had. Or you'd buy two of the same, so he could choose one and I could choose one. Yeah, you know, really the great day was when <laughs> Dairy Queen started making blizzards because then we could go at, and, and, and it had to be that w once we got out of our meeting we had enough time to drive to the Dairy Queen get a blizzard and take it back to the hotel before our, before our curfew was up and uh, I remember we did that a lot. Yeah we did that a lot. A lot of blizzards. They arrived for work in a 1972 Volkswagen blending in nicely with the rest of the capacity crowd. The driver is Jim Zorn, his accomplice, Steve Largent. Together, they just may become the most productive passing combination ever to play the game. We just park amongst the fans and walk in with fans, going, hey guys, hey, have a great game today. We'd drive up, I'd lock the doors, we'd walk in with everybody else, and then the fans would go into the stands and we'd go into the locker room. Show your stuff and drink milk. He has lots of calcium, protein and vitamin, whoever you are. Show your stuff and drink milk. I don't know if I have just one favorite game. You know, I always love beating the Raiders. You know, I, I, one of the games that I, I think would be one of your favorite games was the first time we beat the Broncos in the Kingdom. First time we beat the Broncos ever, but in the Kingdom we beat them. Gosh. And uh, I remember you threw a pass to me uh, that was a game-winning pass. It was in the second half. And um, you threw a pass to me and we scored and we ended up beating the Broncos for the first time in our club's history. Yeah. That, that was a big game. Slot right, sprint draw with Zorn rolling back to pass off the fake. Looks once, now lobs one deep for Larson. He's wide open. He makes the grab. That play was a scramble. We used to have a uh, kind of a, it's an illegal block now, but we used to have a block where we'd, I would drop back, the, the fullback would kind of act like he was going to go out and he'd come back and he would nail the defensive the end, end or anybody coming off the edge and then I'd scramble. So I just remember Jerry telling me before we went out, he goes, they're still playing man coverage. So uh, we ran the scramble play and I'll, uh, what was really bizarre about this and nobody would ever ever do this today in in football because you ran a 23 yard comeback, comeback. an out and up a yeah. 23 yard out and up yeah so we drop back you're running down the field i scrambled i think i might have even pumped Pump, right? and then i just pump. let it go and i yeah. thought again i thought i i overthrew him and i remember that play you beat louis wright you beat louis wright who was That's an right. all pro yeah he was an all pro player yeah man so out there uh, was the bubble practice facility. We had training camp here, and we stayed in the, the uh, campus dorms. Look at all the, uh, the trees are grown up now and, and covered yeah. the uh, apartments back there. Remember those apartments? Yeah. Everybody was always paranoid about uh, the Raiders renting apartments. Yeah, the, and watching know, the our Raiders practice. organization and watching our practices. And they probably did. <laughs> the thing I remember about this field is after they signed Brian Bosworth in the first round of the supplemental draft, they brought him in in a helicopter, and the helicopter landed right here. No and then he, he, he walked in and signed his contract and all that stuff. I'm happy to be here. Oh. This was a field as well, much like the uh, old Seahawk field, where you could, they had uh, portable goal, po goal posts. Right. So you could put the goal posts anywhere, anywhere you wanted. So you could have the fields running both, both ways. I, I think Steve was really selfish, <laughs> to be honest with you, because he wanted the ball, right? And so he was, you know, 
hey, Z, let's go do this. Okay. You thought maybe uh, having me around a little bit would get you more catches. It worked. It did. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I, I, I knew about Jim, or I learned about Jim very quickly, was that he was a guy that liked to work. And I like to work too. Uh, and, and I like to try different things and hone my game. And uh, Jim liked to do that too. Even before practice, we'd say, okay, uh, hey, let's, after practice today, let's work on uh, comebacks. So even before practice, we would already have a plan of what we were going to practice after practice. And I remember uh, even in the strike years, because we went through the 82 strike together, we'd come out. Remember, we used to work at a park yeah. uh, down in downtown Kirkland yeah. as well. And then we would just work on different route routes and route combinations. Nobody admires Largent more than Zorn. He's just kind of in his own world. He's out there. Earth to Steve, he's got an ability to adjust to the football that makes me look good. Almost the whole season, uh, every season, you had, especially when we played in the kingdom, you, the had these, you had these turf burns all up and down your arms the whole yeah. year. Yeah. And you try to, you know, you try to cover them up. And then you got used to this one uh, ointment called Silvadine, yeah. right? And Silvadine is for burn, burn victims, right. really. And it heals from the inside out. You never get a scab. You have, a new, you have new skin almost yeah. a week later, yeah. right? And then you just burn them off. Yeah, that turf, turf was nasty. It was uh, asphalt. It was asphalt. And then they covered the bases because it was the Mariner Stadium, too. They covered the bases in um, with a metal plate. You'd be running on the turf, and then you'd go, boom, 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 because you'd run over one of the bases. This used to be where they did all the interviews right there against that wall. Yeah. Well, this was the training room right yeah. here. This is where you got taped or got for injuries. You were right in here in this facility. The yeah, whirlpools, right whirlpools, the hot back there. Tubs. This was the weight room. It looks like it's still a weight room. And the locker room was right here. These were all locker, locker rooms room, in here. Yeah. The, the equipment, all the equipment rooms there, the showers on, are on the other side. This is where I'd come in for practice every day. I'd walk in this door, come in here. My locker was right there. You, Jim, you, you didn't locker here, but uh, uh -huh. Dave Craig's locker was right there. When we beat the Dolphins in a game in the playoffs that we weren't supposed to win. And uh, I didn't even play in that game. You were the holder. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so yeah. I held. Yeah. <laughs> now, I was the so holder in that game. You weren't on the DNP list. <laughs> I, I didn't realize that. I should start patting myself more on the back. <laughs> it was just memorable in terms of the Seahawk organization. Absolutely. It was yeah. great. I still remember Chuck being hiked up on everybody's shoulders. Shoulders, yeah. Because we were going to the AFC Championship. Yeah, game. against the Raiders. It was the first year we ever were in the playoffs. And uh, we go down and we play the team that's the number one team in the AFC, Dolphins. Uh, Dan Marino is a rookie that year. And we were playing them in Miami. Playing them in Miami. And uh, we were heavily underdog in that game. But uh, we go down there and, and, uh, and steal a win um, and then end up in the, in the AFC Championship game. And I think what Steve's not saying is he caught a really significant pass from Dave in that game. It was late in the game. I think it was a corner route. Yeah, and was. you. You caught it. I don't know if you caught it on the two-yard line going in, or, or two-yard line, uh, or, or down there. Yeah, really I got, deep. it went down the two-yard line. Oh, then Kurt okay. scored the next play. Yeah, that was. Yeah. I mean, that was pretty amazing. Yeah, and I did hold. Uh, yeah, I did hold for well, that I, extra I only point. Caught, I only caught two passes the whole game, and one was just before that one, so I didn't catch a pass till the fourth quarter. It was just all, all the right pieces fell together. And it, was, and it didn't fall together until the end of the game. That's what... That's actually, what, we were winning that game yeah, and until it, the third quarter. Yeah. And then Dave threw an interception, and uh, they didn't score in the interception, but they scored right after that. And they went ahead for the first time. And we were ahead, I mean, we were behind by three points or something like that, inside of a yeah. touchdown. And, and uh, so it was, it was a great game. I do remember holding well in that game, too. Oh, yeah, <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> we were playing the San Diego Chargers one year, and this was about Sam Atkins. And uh, he wore number 12. He's the original number 12. Yeah. During the game, 
they had torn the whole front of my jersey off. Just the whole the whole number 10 was gone. All you could see were the Your top pads. of my shoulder pads. And so I was tucking in the sides of, of my shirt to try to keep the shoulder pads from flopping around. And finally, Mr. Official said, uh, you can't come back out here with that jersey. So we went off the field and Jack had sent in our equipment guy to go get my backup jersey uh -huh. and somebody had stolen it oh. <laughs> out of the locker room. And so the equipment guy said, Sam, Sam Atkins, take off your jersey. And they cut the name off of the jersey and, and I wore number 12. I have some, there's some photos yeah. <clears throat> of me wearing number 12 in a game. And, but the funniest part of the story, I think, was the next week, the head coach, I forgot who we played, but Sam tells this story that the head coach came up to Sam and thought he was such a fantastic quarterback because he could throw the ball with both hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just amazed that it didn't matter if he could throw left or right-handed when he wanted to. Zorn back to pass, looks for Howard, and throws to Larger, and at the 25 of Buffalo. He's on his way, Moody chasing him. Jim and I formed a fast friendship uh, when I came to the team that first year in 76, but over the years it grew stronger, uh, particularly when Jim got married, uh, because then we could kind of connect on a different level than just football, uh, because we were both married and we were both, you know, we both struggled with our wives. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, we had a lot in common, both our faith and our football created the friendship. Even during the football season, we started rooming together, but then in the off season, we would always seem to do something together. Yeah. And I probably grew more as a person, as a Seahawk, and just living here, being around guys like you, being around our teammates. I try to go to every, every Seahawk home game. If Steve's in town, we'll watch the game together. And yeah, we always try to think we know what's going on. I haven't been back here since I played. Really? I've not been in this, this room right here <clears throat> since 1989. Yeah, it looks a lot different, but a lot of memories, a lot of memories.